Hi everyone, we're going to be looking at the last in our uh, series on Ecclesiastes today from Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 9 to 14. Now the other day I was watching a video on, on YouTube as you do and um, this was a video from um, uh, Dennis Prager. I don't know if you've come across him before and the Prager U videos. Um, they're quite interesting I find. Um, but but um, there was one video he sort of does a fireside chat where he um, he answers people's questions and one of the questions that someone asked is um, where do I find wisdom where do I get wisdom and this was only a young man who'd asked he was only about 20 years old or, or something like that and you think well what a question you know where do I get wisdom you know, and I think it's great that, that that young people are asking those kind of questions but it's a really good question, isn't it? You know, where do I find wisdom? Where do I get wisdom? How do I get wise in this world? And that's something which Ecclesiastes does. It, it sort of teaches us and helps us how we find wisdom, you know, where to get wisdom, how to think about life. And as we come to the end of Ecclesiastes, what we get is a, it's a summary. It's a summary. This is why we should listen why we should pay attention to what the teacher says and it's a summary of the whole message of Ecclesiastes and this is actually a really um, just kind of wraps everything up really nicely so what does it say why the first thing is why we should listen why we should listen to the teacher and it says the teacher uh, not only was the teacher wise but also he imparted knowledge to the people so the teacher, he wasn't just wise, but he imparted that knowledge as well. He wasn't just someone who was kind of wise on his own, but um, you know, he, he, he gave out that knowledge as well. And he wasn't you know, some sort of ivory tower academic who knew how things worked in theory, but it's, you know, he imparted that knowledge to people as well. He communicated it. Now, the wisdom and the knowledge that he, he, he gained it took effort to gain it. This is what it says that it needed. He, um, he pondered. He pondered. He, he considered the questions of life. Now, I think so many people just you know, allow things to happen in life without really pondering, without really thinking about what this means, without really thinking about uh, what this means for my life, you know, what significance this, this might have. And the teacher, as we've seen, particularly ponders about death and what death means for, for the way that we live our lives and our relationship with God. And, and I think it, um, you know, he's, his wisdom really shines as he, he thinks about these bigger questions. But many people don't think about those questions. So that's one reason why we should listen to the teacher. It says that he searched out. So wisdom is not something that just presents itself to us, but we need to search it out. You know, we need to, to go looking for it. You know, it doesn't just happen, but we need to search it and, and to, to kind of get it from, our, um, from the lessons, you know, to learn those lessons that we should learn. They don't, we don't automatically learn them. So the teacher, he searched out wisdom and he set in order many proverbs. You know, he listened to many different, to, to a lot of different wisdom from a lot of different sources, you know, to many proverbs. And he set them in order. He thought hard about them and he thought about what they meant. And he, he kind of um, began to, to put them in order. He set them in a kind of a, um, a, a coherent way. So that's what the teacher did when it comes to wisdom that he pondered, he searched out, he set in order. So we should listen uh, to him. But he didn't just gain wisdom, though. He communicated it too. And this is what it says in verse 10. The teacher searched to find just the right words. So he, he didn't just splurge any old words on a page. I think sadly I'm too um, too eager to do that sometimes to get something across that you, you forget you know it's important to pick the right words not just any old words uh, but the teacher he searched to find just the right words and so what he he wrote it says was upright and true if you're looking for something upright and true what the teacher wrote is just that this is a good model for preaching, actually. I was thinking about this and thinking that, you know, godly wisdom, which is, you know, pondered, searched out, you know, distilled wisdom, 
the right words, godly and true. You know, that is a model of good preaching, actually. And that's something that I kind of try to aspire to. And I hope that every preacher uh, tries to aspire to. I'm not saying that I achieve that, um, but it's something that, that preachers, I, I hope, should aspire to. And then he goes on to say, verses 11 and 12, he talks about the words of the wise are like goads. They're collecting sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. So why should we listen to wisdom? He says that the words of the wise are like goads. Now, goads are, they're the little nails um, in the old translation, it was called the pricks, you know, which guide animals to go in the way that you want them to go. You don't want to want them to go that way or that way. And they know that if they go that way or if they go that way, they'll get, you know, goaded, though it will hurt. So they go in the straight way, the way that you want them to go. And that's what the teacher says. Uh, the, the words of the, the wise are like they're like goads. That is, they sometimes hurt. They sometimes hurt, but they guide us on the right ways. That's why it's really important to listen to wisdom, and particularly when it comes to godly wisdom. You know, we need to listen to it because it will hurt us sometimes, but it will always be for our good. It will always guide us on the right ways. It's funny enough, just um, just today, just um, as I'm uh, recording this, um, I was reading Psalm 141. Psalm 141 verse 5 says, Let a righteous man strike me, that is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is oil on my head. There are lots of verses in the Bible and especially in Proverbs which talk about this kind of thing that, you know, sometimes we need to be rebuked. Sometimes we need to, you know, someone to say, no, that's wrong. And actually the, the one who, who will do that to us is often the kindest, is often the one who cares about us the most, who is prepared to say, I think you've got that wrong. So we need to listen to the words of the wise and we should, it says, beware of, uh, be warned of anything in addition to them. So we should be careful because there are a lot of things that seem to be wise words, but no, there are at the end of the day, wisdom is finite and we need to be uh, to be careful that we are listening. And he says uh, of the making of many books, there is no end and much study. Where is the body? You know, you can always ca carry on reading and reading and reading and looking and looking and looking. But wisdom remains the same, that wisdom is is something that you know, not many people really in the wide in the big scheme of things really have. So we need to be careful who who we look to. It made me think a little bit, actually, of um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses um, 3 and 4. And this is a passage that we've been um, uh, looking at in, in, our, um, oh dear, uh, in our Sunday morning sermons. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. The time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather round them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So Paul says there will come a time when people will not put up with sound doctrine. He says that people will just, you know, that they will only want what their itching ears want to hear. They'll only want their, their consciences to be massaged rather than challenged. They will just want someone to come and say to them, oh, you're fine. You're nice. God's nice. Just try hard to be nice. And that's basically it. That's the message, unfortunately, that some some preachers give. Uh, that's not the message of the wise. And so we should be we should be warned. We should be careful. And it made me think of um, uh, what um, it says in John chapter six, verse 68. Simon Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And at the end of the day, when we when we come, when we want wisdom, we need to listen to Jesus. And anything which is in line with what Jesus said is wisdom. And that is where we should really find and seek true wisdom in the mouth of, of Jesus and, and in what is in accordance with what he said and taught. 
So back in um, Ecclesiastes then, the, the, uh, the last couple of verses, this is the summary. This is the summary of everything that the teacher has been saying to us over the past 12 chapters. Now all has been heard, here is the conclusion of the matter. You know, sometimes it's become a bit of a thing um, on the internet um, for, for people, you know, if they, they read a long post, um, they put a what's called a TLDR, you know, too long, didn't read. Um, and, um, you know, it's just kind of a summary to say, it's too long, I didn't read it. This is, this is what you need to know. This is what the teacher is saying. It's all, be, we've heard it all. This is the conclusion, the TLDR. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. Fear, fear God and keep his commandments. That is the summary of it. And the reason is for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. So God will judge. That is the reason that we should, uh, the reason that we should fear God and keep his commandments. Just think about it for a second, you know, that this is what the teacher's been saying all the way through about about death and about judgment. Now, why is it that we should do the right thing even when no one is watching? Now, why is it that we should do good deeds even when we don't have to and live in that way? Why is it that we should enjoy life in God's ways as we thought about last week? We need to look to the future. We need to look to the future, to the judgment that, that God is bringing. And when we look to him, when we look to, to the future judgment, then that gives us the strength and the power to say, well, at the end of the day, I will have to give an account of my life. And I want the account of my life to be good. You know, I want to serve God. I want to, to learn to enjoy life in his ways. I want to, to do good. I want to be upright and true. All of those things because I know that I will give an account one day uh, to God and he's watching. And so I want to serve and to please him in the here and now and live with him eternally. That's the sum total of what Ecclesiastes is trying to say, really. So let's draw um, a couple of threads together as we close. I've got two things, two things for us to think about as we finish. The first thing is that we need to be careful of who we listen to. Now, we're living in days when I, I think it's never been easier to, uh, to, to get Christian content or, or just general kind of things which people claim to have wisdom. The Internet makes it extremely easy to go on to Google or to you know, search for wisdom and uh, if you're you know, looking for wanting to solve some problem in life, you can just Google it, um, type it up, find a video, find an article, something that someone's written. We need to be really careful at the end of the day that we are listening to true wisdom. Because, as we've seen, uh, wisdom, not everything that claims to be wisdom, is wise. So we need to be careful. We need to find people who, who listen to God. Find people who listen to the Bible, who, who seek this as wisdom and who don't deviate from it. We need people who think carefully about real life. You know, people who aren't kind of ivory tower academics, but people who actually think about how the Bible applies to real life. We need to uh, find people who will communicate carefully, you know, who will choose their words carefully, who won't put presentation above um, the actual content. You know, I think sometimes it's easy to, to put in a good joke or to try and you know, um, make the message go down easily, but actually you lose the content, sadly, and some people do that. We need to find people who will, you know, whose communication is appropriate and, and communicates effectively the truth. And we need people who will not shy away from telling us the hard truths, the hard truths of wisdom, where wisdom will, would correct us. I remember um, a few years ago uh, in our home group, we were chatting one evening and there was um, someone was saying how much they'd appreciated a particular book, a Christian book, and it spoke to them and it was their favourite book and everything. And um, I'd never heard of this book anyway. And then I got back home that very evening 
and I switched on my computer and I just stumbled on an article which um, gave this book and is as an example of a, a Christian book which was um, you know how did this book ever get so popular it's actually not not containing true Christian teaching um, and you know I had to send that over I just felt it was a you know a message from God and and sometimes we have to do the hard thing you know if you see someone else who's doing um, something which would be bad for them then you know we need to take responsibility for that too so we need to watch over ourselves and keep an eye on each other uh, as well. So that's the first thing, to be careful who we listen to. The second thing is we need to fear God and keep his commands. What does that mean? Carry on praying. Carry on reading the Bible. Carry on worshipping God. Seek him with all your heart in everything we do. He will make your path straight. But that, at the end of the day, is the path of wisdom, to fear God to serve him, to keep his commands, to love him and to love others. And that is uh, what God wants us to do, how God wants us to live the path of wisdom. So let's take a moment to pray as we as we close now. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would help us to be people who uh, who are careful with who we listen to. We pray that you would help us to be people who... Um, uh, our watch over ourselves and others in seeking to uh, to listen to godly wisdom and we pray heavenly father that you would help us to to fear god and keep your commandments we pray that you would help us to have that spiritual walk with you day by day and help us to grow in faith and we pray that you would be with the, uh, with us through this time in jesus name we pray amen